Equalization Part 2. Now the parametric EQ is not a bad plugin at all. Now we're continuing on from the Equalization Part 1 where we finished with talking about the bass boost and the 7 band EQ. Now in comparison to those, this is a stellar plugin, it gives you lots of control, lots of flexibility. But it is now in the shadow of the parametric EQ2, which is pretty amazing. So you have to keep that in mind. Let's go through the features of this just so you know and can use it if you need to. Again, this one's not going to use as much CPU as the Equalizer 2, but you know, this might not be the first choice either. If you have the power, you're going to want to use the parametric EQ2. Here we go. First of all, you have a little graph down here you're always going to be able to come down and see exactly what you're doing. This is one advantage over the 7 band EQ and the bass boost which have no graphic interface really at all. So let's start just tweaking the default here. What you're seeing down here is the resulting curve after it's gone through all of these different filters. Now you can change your filters right here. If you look up at the hint menu here, you're going to be able to see exactly what they are. We have notch, we have all the passes, etc. All kinds of fun. Primarily though you'll leave it on a peaking so you can pull it up and down, etc. Now here we can adjust the frequency of any of these and the bandwidth. Make it narrow or very wide. Again, that's pretty much the whole thing right there. We've now gone through basically every feature of it because each of these have the same abilities. You can turn it off, you can make it, you know, low pass, band pass, high pass, notch, peaking, etc. So, that's really it. Next comes in the parametric EQ2. Now, the parametric EQ2 is really something primarily because of the interface. That's what the beauty of this EQ really is. It's just the interface is nice and slick. Now you can click and drag on everything. It's also bigger than all of the other EQs in FL Studio. It has more options and it sounds pretty good too. Now let's go through this EQ and in the process I'll spend a little time showing each of the major components that are also in the other EQs as well. First of all, this interface. You know, they've really taken the time when you go over it, it gets a little bigger, it pulsates, you know exactly where you are. The frequency shows up immediately below with the percentage of the bandwidth. Move it down, around, etc. Everything kind of has a little glow to it. The color changes when you're on top. Another thing that I really like is that you see the pink line here that's the curve of this one filter but the white line is the combined of all of the filters so you can see the six really doesn't have anything going through it at this point go across it and you can see that that line there is adding into the overall combined of the white very slick interface you're going to know exactly what's going on at all times now that's just half of it the other half is when you push play and actually have material going through it now if you remember, this is that beat from the Equalization Part 1 movie. You can see exactly where all the frequencies are. Let's mute that for a moment. Now, you can change the monitoring turn it off if you're having CPU problems. You can turn it to the input and see what originally was there and you can see what's happening after it's gone through the EQ. Not only that, but you can actually store a setting and then compare. Go between the two. We also have some other choices here. High precision monitor. That's going to change the monitoring here so that the actual background frequencies are shown very much more precise. Now that's going to suck up some additional CPU. Not tons, but it will take up extra. We can turn that off and it will go a little faster and be just pretty good. We can also turn off the high quality oversampling. 
a little bit rougher effect. If this is something that's buried in your mix, it doesn't matter as much, but if it's something that's critical, you're going to turn on the high quality oversampling. Here we can view the band tokens or not. Now we have little circles or not. Now this side are basically the same controls as here with just a different look at it. Sliders, frequency, and bandwidth. Now if you go back over to here, keep in mind you can always right click to reset and right click to change the type of filter that it is and the order. This is talking about the slope. You can also click here to change the filter type. I mean just everything they've thought of. It's very slick, very easy to use, and gets great results. That's one of the strengths of this one. So, after going through these two equalization movies, the very first that we talked about the graphic equalizer that's just so good looking and now the parametric EQ here these are the two plugins you're really going to be using the seven band the bass booth and the parametric EQ one are really ones that you might come to later but are not so critical anyway let's move on now to the next type of effect